Welcome back to McMaster University course, Computer Science 1JC3, Introduction to Computational Thinking. Today we're going to start on a new topic, Information Security. Information Security is concerned with the protection of electronically stored and manipulated information. And because this information is stored on systems, it's also concerned with the protection of these systems, these information systems that store and manipulate information. Now, as you all are, I'm sure, aware of, information security is a growing dynamic field. It's becoming more and more important as we move into the information age. And a very important subfield of information security is network security, because some of the greatest concerns now about information security involve using networks, in particular the internet. Now, information security is closely related to software reliability because information systems and security mechanisms that are designed to protect these systems are heavily based on software and software is very difficult to develop and maintain and often it's very unreliable. So security problems can occur due to software problems. Okay, so I have a question for you. This involves the internet information security. Why has the internet made information security more difficult? We could say much, much more difficult. So I'll give you a moment to answer this question. Uh, you can turn off your video and answer it and we'll come back. Well, welcome back. So there's four possible answers. The first, it is harder to identify attackers. Yes, it is. Attackers can come from any place in the world and they can attack using the internet. So this is true. Attacks can be carried out over any distance. Again, attackers can attack from any place in the world. So yes, it can be, attacks can come from a great distance. Infrastructure is more exposed to attackers. Before there was an internet, it would be very hard for someone to break into a building from another continent. Today, this is not inconceivable at all. So infrastructure is much more exposed to attackers. Another example is if you have a company and you want to set up a web server for your company and you want your clients and your customers to come to your web server, you're exposing the infrastructure your web server is based on to the world. So C also is an answer. And finally, D, physical means of protection are not as effective. It used to be you could just secure your building, and as long as your building was secure, you were safe. Now, your building could have servers in it that you need to make available to the outside world. The outside world can get into your building using the internet. Now, Information security is unique compared to other concerns in computing. It's unique because it's concerned with misuse instead of proper use. Most of the things we're concerned about in software, like how you maintain software, is concerned about proper use. So information security is different, and this makes it hard to engineer, and it involves most of the components of information systems. So you can't just develop one component. You have to look at all the components. And information security requirements clash with many other system requirements. So for instance, if we think about the example of a web server, the web server's main requirement is that it wants to be able to provide services to the clients or customers of a company. But the security requirement should be we do not want the web server attacked 
So from the security point of view, we should make the web server inaccessible. From the normal company concerns, we should make the web server as accessible as possible. So you can see how information security requirements clash with other requirements. And information security crosses component boundaries and levels of abstraction. Security is something you cannot isolate. And so it's very hard to separate from other concerns. And a simple way of saying all of this is that a system is only as secure as its weakest component. Security is a global issue for software and computing. Okay, so let's talk a moment about what needs to be protected. Well, we have data. Here we have data. And there's three main things that have to be detected. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And I'm going to say in a moment what these mean. And we have information systems. We have system confidentiality, system integrity, availability of services. So similar to data, but these are for information systems. And in addition, we have system resources. We don't want people stealing system resources like disk storage or CPU cycles. We have monitoring mechanisms to protect and security mechanisms. And an overarching thing that needs to be protect is your personal or your organization's reputation. If there is a secure, a significant security breach of your organization, that could greatly hurt your organization's reputation. It could even mean the end of your organization. Okay, so let's talk about confidentiality. So what is it? So it's also called privacy. But confidentiality is the state in which information and resources are concealed. So they're concealed from people or systems that we want to conceal them from. And confidentiality also applies to metadata. Metadata is data about other data. Uh, so we often want to have confidentiality of metadata as well. So uh, this metadata confidentiality can talk about existence, the existence of data, where the data is located, what kind of protections are on the data. And confidentiality is best achieved by following the need to know principle. So this is a, a special case of the principle of least privilege. So let me explain the principle of least privilege. So let's say you have someone and you're going to let them do a job. You want to give them the least amount of principles, princi the least amount of privilege to get the job done. So let's say you have a cat and you have to go away for a few days and you're going to have one of your friends watch your cat. Now, your cat lives in your house or your apartment, so that friend needs to be able to get into your house. They probably need the keys to your house or apartment. They need to know where the cat food is. They need to be able to provide the cat food and so forth. Do they need to know all your bank account numbers and passwords? No, they don't need that privilege. You only need to give them the privileges they need to get the job done. So this is the principle of least privilege. In this principle, we only provide the privileges that are needed to get the job done. And as I said, the need to know principle is a special case of this. The need to know principle is you only provide as much information as is needed to get the job done. So confidentiality is achieved by providing only the information that actually needs to be known. The rest you basically keep protected. Now, the military, especially in the US, has been very interested in keeping information secret for a long time. And there had been a great deal of development in mechanisms to protect con confidentiality in the years between World War II and the start of the internet, which started roughly in the late 1970s. The military, in many ways, is obsessed, has been obsessed with confidentiality. 
And so a lot of the early work in confidentiality was developed by the military. So that's confidentiality. Integrity is something a little different. Integrity is a state in which data and resources have not been accidentally or maliciously modified or destroyed. So confidentiality is concerned with keeping information secret. Integrity is concerned with keeping data and resources intact, un unmodified. And of course, integrity also applies to metadata. And the metadata, integrity metadata includes the origin of data. We don't want someone to change what the origin is, the provenance. The provenance is the history where that data came from, access history, who's had access to this data. And if we have integrity violations where someone has gained access to data and modified it, this reduces the trustworthiness of the data and resources. We can't trust it as much because it may not actually be the same as it is supposed to be. And there's two approaches to maintain integrity. One is prevention of unauthorized attempts to modify the data resources. We don't try to not let unauthorized people or agents or principals have access to the data. And the other is detection. We may have integrity violations, but we're not as bad off if we detect they're happening. And the banking industry has played a major role in the development of mechanisms to protect integrity. Banks are concerned that with someone's bank account, the, the balance is the true balance. They don't want people changing what the balance is of a bank account. And in many ways, the banking industry has been the opposite of the, mil the military. The military is concerned about keeping things secret. They much rather have things secret. Having data damage is not, going, is not nearly as important as keeping things secret. For the banking industry, keeping information intact, undamaged, is much more important than keeping things secret. They'd much rather have someone's bank account information be revealed than have the bank account balance be modified. Okay, the third thing that needs to be protected is availability. Availability is a state in which information or resources can be used as needed. So availability is an important aspect of reliability. If we have systems that are reliable, they should provide availability to resources and to data according to whatever the requirements are for that system. And denial of service attacks are attempts to block availability. Um, and the problem with a denial of service attack is they can be difficult to detect because they can look like legitimate attempts to access information and resources. So a simple example would be you have a web server. So we have a web server here. And we want our clients, people out in the real world, we want them to gain access to our web server. So they can make requests. They will make requests using TCP to make a connection. And a standard simple denial of service attack is we send so many requests to open up connections that the web server is overwhelmed and cannot proceed. It has, you know, millions and millions of these requests and it can't tell which ones are legitimate and which ones are not. And as a result, the, the clients who actually want to do something with this web server, they get pushed out. So that's a typical standard kind of idea of a denial of service attack. Okay, so we have another question. In operating systems, file access controls are designated by R, W, and X. R stands for read. W stands for write and X stands for execute. So what do these correspond to? 
That's the question. Okay, so take a moment, come up with your answer. Okay, welcome back. Well, read, if you have read control, that's controlling access to the information. That corresponds to confidentiality. Write, that corresponds to having access to the data and you can modify it. That corresponds integrity and X, which is execute, corresponds availability. So here's the right answer. Okay, so that will complete our lecture for today and we will continue with information security.